Hello friends whether you are a student an experienced engineer or simply curious about civil engineering this video will enhance your knowledge of construction so let us get started slump test for concrete workability the slump test measures the consistency of fresh concrete a typical slump for normal concrete is between 75 to 100 mm if it is 75 mm slump it indicates a drier more workable mix suitable for structural applications if it is 100 mm slump it indicates a wetter mix that is easier to handle making it better for intricate forms curing period for concrete the recommended curing period for concrete is at least 7 days for ordinary portland cement why 7 because on day 1 concrete attains 20% of its strength day 3 reaches 40 to 60% strength day 7 achieves around 70 to 80% strength hence during this period curing is essential to minimize the risk of cracks minimum clear distance between reinforcing bars the minimum clear distance between parallel reinforcing bars should be at least the diameter of the larger bar or the maximum size of the aggregate plus 5 mm whichever is greater example you are using a 16 mm diameter rebar and 20 mm aggregate the minimum clear distance would be the greater of diameter of the larger bar that is 16 mm or maximum aggregate size plus 5 mm is equal to 20 mm plus 5 mm that is 25 mm in this case the minimum clear distance should be 25 mm to ensure adequate spacing for proper concrete placement and strength bricks first class bricks with a compressive strength of 10.5 newton per mm square are ideal for constructing load bearing walls in buildings for example in a multi story structure these bricks can support significant weight safely in contrast second class bricks with a compressive strength of 7.5 newton per mm square are better suited for non load bearing applications like internal partitions or decorative walls where high strength is not critical first class bricks can absorb up to 20% water making them more durable and suitable for load bearing structures as lower water absorption helps reduce the risk of damage from moisture in contrast second class bricks can absorb 22% water which may be acceptable for non load bearing applications such as internal walls where the increased moisture absorption does not significantly affect structural integrity lap length in reinforcement for lap lengths in reinforcing bars the length where two bars overlap should be at least 40 times the bar diameter or 450 mm whichever is greater example if using a 16 mm diameter rebar minimum lap length is equal to 40 into 16 is equal to 640 mm since 640 mm is greater than 450 mm the lap length should be 640 mm this ensures proper load transfer and structural integrity factor of safety the factor of safety is the ratio of ultimate load carrying capacity of a structure to the actual applied load it is used to account for uncertainties in material properties construction quality and design assumptions fos is equal to 15000 kg divided by 10000 kg that is fos is equal to 1.5 in this example a factor of safety of 1.5 indicates that the beam can handle 50% more load than what is expected under normal conditions this extra capacity accounts for uncertainties such as variations in material strength potential overloads and imperfections in construction by using a factor of safety engineers ensure that the structure remains safe and functional even if unexpected loads or conditions occur admixtures admixtures modify concrete properties improving workability strength and durability example given water reducing admixtures are used to improve workability without adding extra water this type of admixtures are generally used in high rise buildings 
accelerators. Admixtures like calcium chloride can be added to speed up the setting time of concrete. In cold weather construction, an accelerator helps ensure that the concrete sets quickly. Retarders are used to delay the setting time of concrete. They are beneficial in hot weather conditions. Now the next point is curing methods for concrete. Water curing. This involves keeping the concrete surface wet by spraying or submerging it in water. Membrane curing. A curing compound is applied to the surface to form a moisture retaining film. Example, after pouring concrete for a sidewalk, a curing compound is sprayed to seal in moisture without needing constant water. Steam curing. Steam is applied to accelerate curing often used in precast concrete. Example, in a precast factory, concrete elements are subjected to steam for several hours to speed up strength gain. Electrical curing. Electrical currents are passed through the concrete to generate heat, enhancing hydration. Generally, electrical curing is used in a cold weather. Types of roof trusses. King post truss. This truss features a central vertical post that is king post supporting a horizontal beam. It is often used in small structures like cottages or sheds. It can span up to 6 meters. Queen post truss. Similar to the king post but with two vertical posts that is queen posts and a longer span capability. It is ideal for larger buildings such as warehouses allowing spans of 6 to 12 meters. Hoe truss. This design has a diagonal members sloping towards the center and vertical members. It is commonly used in bridges and larger roofs providing good load distribution. Pratt truss. Characterized by diagonal members sloping towards the ends with vertical members in tension. It is often found in bridges and industrial buildings and it is suitable for longer spans. Fink truss A triangular configuration that distributes loads evenly and is efficient for residential roofs. It is widely used in houses allowing for a lightweight structure with spans of up to 12 meters. Minimum width of a stair Residential buildings the minimum stair width is 900 mm, that is 3 feet. Example, in a typical house, a 900 mm wide stair allows enough space for one person to comfortably ascend or descend, accommodating furniture movement during moves. Commercial buildings. The minimum width is 1200 mm, that is 4 feet. Example, in an office building, a 1200 mm wide stair provides ample space for multiple people to use the stairs simultaneously, ensuring safety during busy times such as evacuations. These width standards help prevent congestion and improve safety in different building types. Types of dams and bridges Some common types of dams include gravity dams, arch dams, buttress dams and embankment dams. Gravity dams. These are massive structures made of concrete or masonry relying on their weight to resist water pressure. Example, Bhakra Dam in Himachal Pradesh. This massive concrete dam on Satlaj River is one of the highest in India and plays a crucial role in irrigation and hydroelectric power generation. Arch Dams. These dams have a curved design that directs water pressure on the canyon walls, allowing for thinner construction. Example, the Glen Canyon Dam in USA is an arch dam that efficiently utilizes its curved shape to withstand the forces of the water. Buttress dams. These consist of a series of triangular supports called buttresses on the downstream side providing strength while using less material than gravity dams. Example, Cochrane Dam in Canada. Embankment dams. Made of earth or rock, these dams rely on their mass and material strength to resist water pressure. Example, the Orovilla Dam in California is an embankment dam 
built with compacted earth materials which helps it withstand significant water loads each type of dam serves specific purposes and is chosen based on factors like site conditions water pressure and material availability so friends see you in the next video thanks for watching